hello everyone welcome back to ESL drill in this video we are dealing with the lesson the journey this is reading a from the third unit uh, from class 10 English prescribed for Andhra and Telangana students okay let's begin the journey first let's look at the author Yesh Dorji Thongshi, born in May 1952, is a prominent name in Assamese literature. Though he grew up in poverty, he studied well and entered Arunachal Pradesh Civil Service and was later elevated to the Indian Administrative Service. He writes fiction, drama and essays in Assamese and English. He has received a national recognition with his novel Mauna Aunt Mukharridai which won the Sahitya Academy Award in 2005. Many of Thangchi's novels, including Sonam, deal with the cultural life of the Monpa and the Shaddukpan tribes of Arunachal Pradesh. Prominent here means important and famous. This author, Eshdaji Thangchi, is a prominent figure, a prominent name in Assamese literature, because he wrote many novels. This is prominent. Prominent means important and, and very famous. Now, he grew up in poverty but studied well and entered Arunachal Pradesh civil service. What is the civil service? Civil service is the government departments that manage the affairs of the country. So, he started working as a civil servant first and then later he was elevated to the IAS, Indian Administrative Service. He writes fiction. Fiction is nothing but books and stories about imaginary people and events. Fiction does not exist at all. It's all about imaginary things. He wrote dramas, essays in Assamese and English language. He has received national recognition. I mean recogni recognition uh, throughout the nation with his novel Mauna Aunt Mukharridai which means this, silent lips and murmuring hearts. This became a big hit in India. Uh, and this novel also won him the Sahitya Academy Award in 2005. Now let's get into the lesson. After spending a leisurely Sunday at home, the very thought of returning to work on Monday is tiring. Lethargy creeps in if the holiday continues over an extended period. That is how I felt when I was preparing to return to my place of work after spending six months at home. The fact that I was to leave behind my newlywed wife and go to a far-off place did not help either. Obviously, I did not want to go. However, I finally did decide to go. I did not have much to carry by way of luggage. Just a trunk. Ours is a hilly terrain without any motorable roads and there is no certainty that we are ever going to have any roads. In any case, while coming home, we do not carry bedding. Besides, I had come home this time round for a special purpose, to get married. Now when we spend a leisurely Sunday at home, we don't feel like going back to work the next day, that is on Monday. Look at this word leisurely here, relaxed and done without any hurry. Now we spend time in a relaxed way and we do things in a relaxed way. We do not hurry on Sunday. And as a result, we don't feel like going back to work on Monday. The very thought of returning to work on Monday is tiring. What is the meaning of very here? Very here means actual. The actual thought of returning to work, going back to work on Monday is tiring. Look at the meaning here. Tiring means making you feel tired. The thought of going back to work makes us feel tired. What else happens? Lethargy creeps in. Lethargy. Lethargy means a feeling of not wanting to do anything. The synonym is laziness. You know, laziness creeps in. What is the meaning of creep in? Creep in is a phrasal verb which means begin. Laziness begins if the holiday continues over an extended period. Extended period. 
That is how I felt when I was preparing to return to my place of work after spending six months at home. The author spent six months at home, and now. uh he had to go back to his work leaving his newly wed wife he had to go to a far off place and these facts he wanted to use these facts to stay back at home but these facts did not help him either obviously i did not want to go the author said obviously obviously means clearly however i finally did decide to go obviously i did not want to go obviously means here clearly apparently as as it is evident as it is clear simple meaning is clearly i did not want to go however i finally did decide to go now did decide is the same as decided but the narrator used did decide here to uh, put some emphasis to force to give some strength to give some force to what he says i did not have much to carry by way of luggage by way of means by means of or in the form of now he did not have much luggage but what he had was just a trunk and he also says that his area is a hilly area hilly terrain what is the meaning of terrain terrain is land so hilly land hilly area without any motorable roads the meaning is roads where motor vehicles cannot go roads where motor vehicles cannot go and he also says that there is no certainty there is no uh, certainty it means here there is no possibility that it's going to happen look at the meaning here there is no certainty means there is no possibility there is no possibility of having motorable roads they did not carry bedding bedding is sheets and covers that we put on a bed bed sheets and pillows everything besides i had come home this time round for a special purpose we use besides when we want to add another reason to what we have already said okay now let's move on to the next one my parents had arranged my marriage according to the customs of our tribal society time flew and 5 months into my marriage i realized it initially i thought of extending my leave even taking unpaid leave but after some dilly dallying i finally decided against it because marriage had increased my responsibilities and i had got into debt on my way home from the bus stop my trunk had been carried by a porter the problem now was we couldn't find anyone who could help me carry the trunk to the bus stop at another time of the year we would have easily found someone to help me but now most of the villages were busy in the fields now the narrator came home to get married and he got married now the marriage happened according to the customs of their tribal society what is a custom custom is an accepted way of behaving or of doing things in a society or a community these customs vary from community to community they are different now after now 5 months happened after the marriage a total of 6 months after he came back home so i initially thought of extending my leave look at this word extend extend means make longer or continue longer so he wanted to continue his leave even taking unpaid leave see here unpaid leave is a leave for which salary is not paid you don't get any money for that unpaid leave now paid leave is different on the other hand so paid leave gives you money i mean gets you money paid leave gets you money but unpaid leave doesn't but after some dilly dallying means after look at this here dilly dally waste time while deciding something or you can say take too long to decide something now he took a lot of time to decide and finally decided against it what did the author decide against the author decided against it here it refers to taking unpaid leave actually he decided to take unpaid leave now he decided against it it refers to taking unpaid leave 
and you know he decided to go back to work because he thought that marriage had increased his responsibilities and he had got into debt what is debt debt is a sum of money that you need to pay someone because you got that money from that person before and you have to pay it back and if you are in such situation you are in debt here b is silent debt okay the author says that his trunk uh, had been carried by a porter when he was coming home a porter is someone who carries luggage at bus stands uh, railway stations and airports now this time uh, the problem was that when he was going back he could not find anyone to uh, help him carry the trunk because he knew that all the people in the village were busy in the fields now let's move on to the next one nobody had time to spare for me in fact carrying the trunk should not have been such a worry for me except that my education had made me shun physical labor after all i was a government officer and the idea of people seeing me carry my own luggage was not at all amusing otherwise for a young man like me it should not have been an issue to carry a 20 kilo chest on my back finally my father came up with a solution don't worry i myself will see you off at dirang i protested how could i allow my old father to carry my trunk what would people think what would they say but i failed to dissuade him it was decided that father would carry the chest now nobody had time to spare for the narrator spare means here spend nobody had time to spend for him now he also knew that it was not a big deal carrying that 20 kilo chest but the problem was that his education had made him shun physical labor what is the meaning shun means avoid why do you think he avoided physical labor or why do you think he avoided physical work it was because of his education because of the pride he got through education so he shunned physical labor it means here he avoided physical labor he stopped doing physical labor after all i was a government officer look at this here let's see how you can use after all this after all is used when you want to add information to what you have already said now he said that his education was the reason behind his avoiding physical labor and he wa- he, want- he also wanted to add another reason that's why he used after all another reason was that he was a government officer and he thought that if he carried the luggage people would laugh at him but he knew that it was not a difficult thing to carry 20 kilo chest on his back issue here means problem it's not a problem L- look at the next one here father came up with a solution here come up with is a phrasal verb which means think of an idea or think of an answer etc now finally the narrator's father came up with a solution means he thought of an idea he thought of an idea and he, maybe he thought of a solution to his son's problem and he, and the solution was this he decided to see his son off at dirang look at this phrasal verb see off see off means to go to an airport train station i mean railway station etc to say goodbye to someone now here he wanted to go uh, to the bus stop along with his son and actually carry the trunk i protested now here protest means disagree i protested means i disagreed the narrator did not agree to uh, the proposal made by his father because he did not want his uh, his father to carry his trunk but i mean he he was also worried about what uh, the villagers and other people would think of him so he, he tried to convince his father but failed to dissuade him so dissuade is the opposite of persuade you can have a look at it on the screen persuade dissuade are the opposite words now if you persuade you convince somebody to do something by giving good reasons you convince them but if you dissuade somebody you convince them not to do something by giving some good reasons now here he 
The narrator tried to convince his father not to carry the luggage by giving some good reasons, but it was a failure. The attempt was a failure. Finally, father decided to carry the chest. Here, chest is that trunk, that box. Let's look at the next part. A large crowd gathered at our place the day I was to leave. People had come to wish me luck. It was 10.20 when I left for Dirang. My father had already left. As I had to do a bit of catching up, I walked fast. Three kilometers down the road, I caught up with my father. Father said, You are late. Would you like to rest for some time? Having walked fast, I was tired. Moreover, I had to cross two hills on the way up to this spot. I quickly sat down on a rock. My father laughed at my plight. So this little distance has tired you? Rest for a while. But we have to be in time for the bus. So a large crowd gathered at our place. Crowd is actually a group of people. So some villagers came to the narrator's village to wish him good luck because he was going back to his workplace. Now father, no sorry, when the narrator left for Dirang, it was 10.20. Father had already left. His father had already left. Look at this past perfect construction here. Had and we three. We use this. Uh, past perfect tense with the first of the two past actions. Three kilometers down the road, I caught up with my father. Let's see what is this. But but before that, let's look at leave for. Leave for means go to. So left for means went to. When I went to Dirang, or maybe when I started for Dirang, that's a better meaning here. Leave for means here to start, to go to a place. Caught up. I caught up with my father. So catch up means to come from behind and reach someone in front of you by going faster. Now father started earlier. It means he had started earlier and then the narrator, I mean his son started. And he walked fast and reached his father. That's what we call catching up with other person. Look at the next one here. Having walked fast. Having walked this is what we call perfect participle. Having plus the past participle form, verb 3. Now, having walked fast, I was tired means I walked fast, I was tired. Moreover, I had to cross two hills on the way. Had to cross. So, when we talk about present necessity, we say how to or has to. But when we talk about past necessity, with every subject, we say had to. I had to, we had to, you had to. Past necessity. I quickly sat down on a rock. My father laughed at my plight. So what is the meaning of laugh at? To make fun of. Ridicule. To mock at someone. Simple meaning. What did his father laugh at? His father laughed at his plight. Plight is actually a miserable situation, a difficult situation. And father noticed that the son was easily tired and he asked him to take rest for some time. And he also uh, told him that they had to be in time for the bus. I mean at the bus stand. Be in time. In time means before the necessary time. So father told the son that they had to be at the bus stand. Uh, I mean in time. Before the necessary time. Before the bus, uh, bus comes. Let's move on to the next one. Father was quiet for some time. He thoughtfully looked at the son for a moment and then his eyes fell on the can of homemade wine that I was carrying. Wetting his lips with his tongue, he said in a matter-of-fact manner, I am thirsty. I gave him the can of wine. He poured himself a mug and handed me the can. He drank all of it at one go. He then arranged the belt that was attached to the trunk carefully on his forehead. So this was the picture. My father carrying my luggage on his back and me following him with a tiny bag in my hand. We were walking up a narrow hilly road and neither of us uttered a word as if we were strangers who spoke different languages. I did not know what was going on in his mind. From time to time, it crossed my mind that it was improper for me to let father carry the luggage. Now, father was quiet. Quiet means here calm and silent for some time. 
and then he looked at the sun sun in the sky for a moment and then he looked at the homemade wine that a can of homemade wine that his son was carrying homemade wine is wine made at home so from palm trees and wetting his lips now father did that wetting his lips with his tongue father i mean arthur's father said in a matter of fact manner what is the meaning of matter of fact manner in a way that shows no emotion or no feelings with no emotions or feelings without any feelings or emotions he said that very casually i am thirsty now the narrator understood i gave him the can of wine he poured himself a mug so pour means here to allow a liquid or something flow into a container especially liquid you can also talk about flour f l o u r flour or some liquid he handed actually the liquid here is homemade wine he poured some wine into the can i mean sorry into the mug and then father drank all of it at one go pour means to make a liquid flow into a container we learned it and at one go means in one attempt here go is not a verb it's a noun interesting right yes it's used as a noun here at one go one attempt he then arranged the belt that was attached to the trunk carefully on his forehead so this was the picture what is the picture picture is not a real picture here picture is situation or scene what's the scene the scene is this my father was carrying my luggage on his back and i was following him with a tiny bag tiny bag very small bag and both of them did not utter a word neither of them uttered a word means here not even one of them uttered a word look at this here from time to time it crossed my mind from time to time means here occasionally not very regularly but occasionally what happened occasionally let's look at that in the next slide occasionally it crossed his mind now cross your mind cross somebody's mind is an idiom which means come into your mind now what came into his mind occasionally what came into his mind this was what came into his mind it was improper for me to let father carry luggage so improper means here not correct he thought that i mean the the idea that came into his mind the thought that came into his mind was that it was not a correct thing allowing his father to carry his luggage i hope you have understood let's move on i wanted to tell him that i would like to carry the trunk myself but my guilt and shame did not allow me to do so this self consciousness had probably to do with my education the white collar job that i had or quite simply my pride somehow i had the feeling that if i carried the luggage my father and my people in fact the whole world would laugh at me and i would be belittled father had provided for my education and i had been able to realize his dreams my parents were truly proud of me it was through me that they had earned a greater degree of admiration and respect from the villagers look at this here now you can clearly understand the the conflict between the narrator's thoughts look at this here for some time he thought that uh, allowing his father to carry the luggage was not a good thing was not proper and at the same time he tried to justify his own action of not carrying the trunk see how he justified his action of not carrying the trunk he said his guilt was the reason his guilt was the reason why he did not carry the luggage what is guilt guilt is the unhappy feeling you have because you have done something wrong sometimes we do something wrong and then we are worried about it we feel bad about it and that feeling is called guilt and that is one of the reasons guilt and shame and then what else did he mention to justify his action self consciousness the meaning is the state of being worried about what others think about you now this is the problem that we have sometimes when we want to do something we are worried about what other people think of us that's not at all necessary but the author i mean the narrator had the same problem here 
So look at this here. His self-consciousness had probably to do with his education. Now had probably to do with. Had to do means here related to or it was because of. Now he had self-consciousness. It was because of his education and the white collar job he had or his pride. So what is white collar job? White collar job is a job in an office, bank, etc. This white collar job does not involve or does not include much uh, labor, much physical labor. And there is uh, other thing as well. Sometimes you hear of blue collar jobs. Blue collar jobs are jobs that that include a lot of physical labor. And there is another thing as well that's called a pink collar job. Pink collar job is a job that is done by especially women in uh, in offices. They are small jobs that are performed by women in offices. Pink collar jobs. Let's move on. Now he thought that if he carried the luggage, his people, in fact the whole world, everyone would laugh at him and he would be belittled. What is the meaning of belittle? Make someone look unimportant. Now he thought that if he carried the luggage, all the people would think that he was unimportant. He thought that they would not value him. Now father had provided for his education and he had been able to realize his dreams. Now when you realize somebody's dreams, you actually achieve their dreams. You achieve something that somebody wants you to achieve. Just like your father wants you to become a doctor or an engineer and then you become and it means you have realized his dreams. Now, look at this here. This is the false prestige that this, uh, that this uh, narrator had. The false prestige was that he thought that the parents, I mean his parents got a lot of respect, admiration, got a lot of uh, respect and approval in the village only because of his education and white collar job. But I don't understand why he does not think of the same thing in a different way. Just imagine, if parents had not provided for his education, he would not have got a white collar job. Then how can he think that his education and then his white collar job is responsible for the respect that the parents are getting in the village? Okay, that is the end of the part one. Uh, I hope you have understood what I have explained here. If you have anything to ask, you can use the comment section and I'll try to reply there. And that's it for today and I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That will encourage me to uh, produce more videos. Thank you very much for watching.